In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use Gen2 data flows to export data to SharePoint using Power Query. I hope it's quick, easy to follow, and informative. Let's jump in. First things first, you're going to need access to a Microsoft Fabric capacity in order to use Gen2 data flows. As you can see, I am in a trial. The next thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a Power BI workspace assigned to that Fabric capacity. In this case, I've got a few. We're going to go into my dev workspace. Then we're going to click new item. And then we're going to click right up here to filter and we're going to search for Gen2 data flow. And we're going to click this button right here to create it. You're going to give it a name. In this case, I'm going to give it the name of video demo. And I'm going to go ahead and leave this box right here checked and then hit create. This will bring you to an empty data flow. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click get data from another source. And in this case, I'm going to be getting data from Azure Databricks or actually just regular Databricks, but I think that's okay. So I'll search for Databricks and I'll click this Databricks button. Now, I am using a Databricks free account, which by the way, if you want, there'll be a video link down below in the video description on how you can get one so you can play around with Databricks. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to sign in and then I'm going to go get my connection details. So in this case for Databricks, I'm going to go right over here to compute. I'm going to go over here to my starter warehouse and I'm going to go to connection details. I'm going to grab my server host name. I'm going to grab my HTTP path and then uh, I'm going to connect. And instead of Databricks client connections, I'm going to switch right here to OAuth and then I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Then I'm going to click the next button and this will connect to my Databricks and start up my SQL warehouse that I have access to as part of Databricks free. Now that my warehouse has created, as you can see, it's connected to my Databricks free environment. I'm going to go right here into my Databricks sample data. I'm going to click this drop down, and while it runs, I'm going to then continue drilling in until I eventually get to a table. In this case, it'll be called customers. And I'm going to load my customers table into uh, Power Query right here. Now, let's just say that I this is the table that I wanted to load and to export onto SharePoint on a nightly basis. That would be pretty easy to set up. All I would have to do is click add destination and then you should now see this button right here that says SharePoint, at which point I can now connect to my SharePoint site. I have this SharePoint site called example site, nothing special. So I will go ahead and I will take its URL, go back into our data pipeline right here, click the site URL. And as you can see, I've already authenticated in. So I'll go ahead and hit next. My uh, Data flow will try to validate this connection and connect to my SharePoint, at which point it'll now prompt me to where I want to save the CSV. And I can save it as customers right over here in my shared documents. So all I have to do is hit next. It'll validate that documentation and it'll ask me for a schema. And then I just have to hit save settings. And just like that, you now have a data flow that can take data from Databricks and export it out to SharePoint. So now that you know the basics, it's time to talk about some of the more advanced features, in particular parameters. By the way, my name's Ned. This right here is my dog, Jai. Let's jump in. So parameters are like variables in Power Query. You can create one by right clicking right here and then going down here to new parameter. Let's just say that we had a parameter called customer name and that parameter and was elevate education, right? So that was the current value right here. Elevation education which is the name of this top row that we have right here. So if I wanted to filter down, what I could do right here is I could go here, search for elevation education, unselect, select all, select just this one, and go ahead and load this. And it'll filter down to just that value. Now, instead of using a string right here, instead what I could do is I could just put the parameter name and it'll use whatever the parameter name is to go ahead and to fill, do that same exact filtering. So here we are setting it to customer name. And as you can see, it's still finding elevation education. Now where this gets really interesting is if we go into our SharePoint export right here, click the next button, we can also use that parameter 
as part of our export name. So we can go right here and we can go select parameter and the value right here can be that customer name parameter. So now it's going to export out <laughs> a data file based on that customer name that it's also filtering with. So why is this interesting? Well, it's because you can pass parameters to data flows and call them via pipelines. So you could have a pipeline that loops through a data set, passing and setting parameters to your new data flow, and then exporting that data out to SharePoint. The example that I showed earlier in the video was just a very simple one, but you can imagine how infinitely more complex this could get and the added functionality that it can bring to your business. Now, if you want to learn more about how to pass parameters to them to your data flows via data pipelines, click the video that's going to be popping up right now at the end screen. Alternatively, it will also be linked down in the video description. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.